we left. They were supposed to be here five minutes ago. I don't know, but obviously something went wrong. And we can't stick around here and wait for them. The Tan Army's gonna be on top of us any minute. I'm gonna see what our situation looks like. Stay there. All right, there's a 50, not 100 feet away. We might make it out of this yet. How are you on ammo? One mag and then I'm at 45. All right, I have 17 rounds left in this. Use them if you need them. Prepare to move up. Give me covering fire. Go! Exit 62's second episode of Level Up. Today we're going to teach you how to build a 50 cal M2 machine gun out of PVC and wood, if you hadn't guessed that already. So, this one's pretty difficult. It's It takes a lot of preparation beforehand, before you even start cutting and drilling, and once you do it you have to, you have to build it slowly and just be careful along the way otherwise you're going to screw things up and it just won't work out right. We're all human, it happens. So, take your time, it'll work. For the gun and the tripod, it's going to cost you about 100 bucks to build. That's providing you don't have to buy any tools for it. So if you can, borrow or whatever tools from whoever you need, or bring it to somebody who knows how to cut things and just have them cut it all for you at once. However, if you don't have a drill, you should really have one, because drills are very handy. I'm not going to give you a parts list here or any kind of dimensions in this tutorial. You have to go to our website and download the PDF. The PDF will include the dimensions and the parts list. Anyway, I'm kind of tired of standing here talking. I, I have homework I have to do, so let's go do this thing. The first step is actually measuring and drawing out all the lines you need to cut along on the wood. Take it slow, measure twice, and cut once. Start cutting. If you can get a hold of a table saw and a jigsaw, I recommend them above anything else. If not a table saw, a jigsaw will still do. Some of the cuts will require holes to be drilled prior to cutting them with the jigsaw. I recommend using wood specific bits, but you can get by with just metal bits if need be. Sand the edges smooth. Next, drill out the holes that the screws will go through once you start securing the side plates to the middle sections. Take the top rear plate and prepare to secure it to the side plate. Use clamps to keep it flush with the top and rear of the side plate. Once clamped, drill a hole through the rearmost and frontmost holes of the pre-drilled holes on the side plate into the top plate. Then secure them with wood screws. Don't worry about putting all the rest of the screws in yet. You'll do that later. Before you secure the barrel hole sections, test fit the PVC barrel to make sure it's level from the gun to the end of the barrel. If you ignore this and it isn't level, it'll look weird. You'll see what I mean, because that's what happened on the one I built. Some adjustments may need to be made from the draft dimensions on this, so keep that in mind. Once everything is in place how you want it, then feel free to drill out the rest of the holes and fasten them with screws. Flip it over and repeat the process.
Next, creating the reloading hatch. There's not a lot of science to this, I just fitted it how I thought it would work. So take a look at the video and make it work from there. It's been like eight months since I built this thing, so I don't exactly remember how it went together. But mainly, make a few blocks of the correct width to fit the top latch and not interfere with the side plates when you open and close the latch. Onto the barrel. The only hard part about this is the heat shroud. Refer to the drawings for exact specs. But you'll want a hole saw about 2 and 5 eighths diameter for the holes. Drill them out one at a time, not two, as in drilling straight through from one side to the next. It isn't exact enough and you'll likely have to start over if you do that because it won't be quite lined up and it'll all be all over the place. You'll cut the barrel into two sections, attaching the middle sections with a PVC coupling. That coupling will stick out the front of the gun receiver and the front of the barrel will attach into that and the barrel shroud will actually attach over the outside of the coupling, holding that into place. Then to keep the barrel shroud in place, I used duct tape and just wrapped it around the barrel where, where it was flush with the end of the shroud once fitted. Um, to make sure it didn't slide off or wobble or anything like that. I wrapped it just tight enough so that I could barely slide the barrel shroud on. Lastly, for the barrel anyway, the tip of the barrel. Use a PVC coupling that slides over the barrel outer diameter and at the end, and uh, one of these things. Then cut the threaded part off and round the hole out. Apply some PVC glue and press it into the coupling. Then take that part and press it onto the end of the barrel.
make the handles. I bought two gate handles and some small one inch PVC and black duct tape and taped them to the handles to give them a round look. Attaching them, you must make two U-shaped blocks and secure them to the receiver of the gun. A small block will be necessary for the lower attach points because the handles that I bought were too tall for the receiver. If you can find shorter ones, I recommend it, but that's all I could find. You'll want to attach it solidly. Don't have anything free floating, because it'll break. Now, flip it over. Take the one bogey wheel and the one caster wheel and take them apart. Keep the caster wheel bracket and the spinning bogey bracket there for the tripod swivel. Attach the caster bracket to the bottom of the receiver. The bogey bracket will bolt into place using the bolt from the caster wheel and the caster bracket. This will allow you to swivel the gun up and down and in a 360 degree circle on the tripod. You don't need the wheels, but make sure you keep the bolt and the nut. Now, paint the gun. Use the same techniques as described in our first tutorial for easy weathering effects. After the paint is dried, if you so choose, attach a 50 caliber ammo can to the side of the gun. Drill two to three holes in the can, then secure it to the position you want on the gun, and simply screw the can to the gun. Ensure the lid is low enough that bullets could theoretically be fed into the gun. It's up to you whether you want to leave the lid on or not, you know, if you want to fill the case with actual 50 cal rounds just so it looks cool. Or fake rounds, whatever you do. Anyway, remember this gun isn't supposed to look realistic from close up. It's supposed to look good from about 10 feet away. So that's why I feel it's acceptable to screw an ammo can on rather than making an actual attach point for it. So there's the gun. Just assemble it and that part is done. 
Next up is the tripod. You need three three-way couplings, three 30-degree elbows, and about 10 feet of tubing. Follow the dimensions for proper cut lengths. The PVC tripod isn't exactly strong, so you'll want to at least um, screw the couplings to the PVC legs. That way you can, for one, disassemble it because this thing's like trying to cram a giant spider into a car if you want to move it. Um, and also, screws are stronger than a lot of the PVC glue for the kind of weight that this gun puts on it. Um, and also, you should probably go to a salvage yard and pick up a car scissor jack and support that underneath the tripod as well. The tripod will hold the gun, but it just won't hold it that long before it starts to sag and look kind of silly. So that's why I recommend that, just as a little bit of backup. And from here, just follow the video for the rest of the assembly, because it's pretty easy. Fasten the swivel bracket from the bogey wheel to the three-way coupling that will go on top. On the three-way coupling, place the bogey wheel bracket and then the two back holes mark those with a sharpie onto the three-way coupling. Remove the bogey wheel bracket and then drill out the two holes you just marked all the way through. And once you've got the holes drilled, Place the bracket on and secure it to the three-way coupling with bolts and nuts.
Lastly, paint it. I used olive green and some tan and black, but you can use whatever color you want. And now to complete the whole ensemble, use the bolt and nut from the bogey wheel to secure the bracket from the gun to the tripod bracket. And there you have a 50 cal machine gun with a tripod.